Hello booktube, this is a shelf tour, bookcase number 14, shelf 3. We're going to continue on with some of those Reader's Digest Impress Press, uh, I think that's how you say it, Impress Mysteries, um, the best mysteries of all time. Um, so we're getting right to it, um, The False Inspector Do by uh, Peter Lovesy. Here's a list of some of his works. Um, this came out in 82, and uh, the volume here is from 2006. And the next one, uh, Tony Hillerman, A Thief of Time. Uh, and here's a list of the Lee Porn and Chi books. And this is, came out in 88, um, and this, this version was uh, published in 2005. Nice little set of maps here of the Four Corners region of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. <clears throat> My wife and I went there on our honeymoon. I had gone to uh, school out there. And we, we went there on our honeymoon, and we went to that little intersect where all the four states intersect there and got some pictures taken. It was fun. Beautiful country. Then we have uh, Raymond Chandler, The Long Goodbye. Uh, list of works. This originally came out in 1953, and this version is 2005. Then we have Ken Follett, Eye of the Needle. Uh, this is one of my favorite of his that I've read. He's, he's written quite a bit. Um, this was originally came out in 78. Um, and the Reader's Digest version here is, again, difficult to tell. And then this is Ashenden, or The British Agent, by W. Somerset Maugham. Uh, one of the better covers in this series, I think. This one has a little flyer in it, which is pretty neat. Um, let's see here. I wish the other ones had those. Those are pretty nice. Here's some of his novels. And this originally came out in 1927. This Reader's Digest version is from uh, 2006. <clears throat> Another Raymond Chandler, The Big Sleep. List of titles. Originally came out in 1939. So, uh, Big Sleep. And then... The last of these Impress Mysteries, uh, the best mysteries of all time. This is Elizabeth George, The Great Deliverance. Some titles. And this came out originally in 88, and this is a 2005 version. So then that was it for the impress. Like I say, I like them. The bindings are a little tight on them. That's the only thing that bothers me about them. So then here we have uh, The World of Mystery Fiction. You probably recognize some of those detectives there. Well, you got detectives, you've got, uh, you got writers too, and some actors. All right. Um, this is Bowling Green, uh, Bowling Green State University Popular Press, Bowling Green, Ohio. Um, copyright 1983, but Reader's Digest put this out again in 1990. So it's edited by Elliot Gilbert. Um, so it starts in the beginning is section one. Um, section two is Poe and the First Great Detective. Section three is The Games of Foot, which is Arthur Conan Doyle. Has Red-Headed League. 
uh, Scandal in Bohemia, The Venture of Speckled Man. Um, more great detectives, uh, G.K. Chesterton, and a few others. As the Golden Age, Dorothy Sayers, Ellery Queen, uh, Georgia Simenon. Um, then you have the Black Mass School, Dashiell Hammett, Raymond Chandler, Cornell Woolrich, and Ross MacDonald. And then the last is The Limits of Detection, which is Robert Barr, Agatha Christie, and Ore uh, Lewis Borges. So, um, just a handy anthology with some of the greats. Then another one of these is um, Cordon Bleu Stories of Crime and Mystery, Murder on the Menu. Sort of a Giuseppe Archimbaldo type of cover there. Edited by Peter Haining. This is uh, Carol Graff and Publishers in New York. This is from 1991. So th there's a, it's a themed collection. And I'll just give you a look at some of the... So let me see, you have um, Ruth Rundell, Paul Glico, Damon Runyon, Patricia Highsmith, P.D. James, Robert Block, August Derelith. Uh, I'm just I'm just picking some out at random. Agatha Christie, Roger Zelazny, um, Rex Stout, Roald Dahl. So this is a, an, another nice anthology. Then here is one of those um, Sherlock Holmes fiction type things. Um, this one's by Nicholas Meyer, who was also a big time writer for Star Trek. This is the Canary Trainer from the memoirs of John H. Watson, M.D., as edited by Nicholas Meyer, who also did the 7% Solution, which I don't have, and I wish I did. I, I remember reading that when I was younger. So uh, this, I reread I re this like a year or two ago and enjoyed it just as much as I did the original time I read it. So W.W. Uh, Norton and Company, New York and London, first edition from 1993. So if you like... Um, those Sherlock Holmes type things, that's, that's a good one. And I have a couple of these uh, book club editions of Agatha Christie. So, uh, What Mrs. McGillicuddy Saw, A Miss Marple Mystery. And uh, I read that this year for Agathon, that paperback junkie did. And then this one's Cards on the Table. Hercule Poirot, which I also read for that Agathon, with the paperback junkie. Um, and again, it's a book club edition. This originally came out in 36. Then there was, just like Louis L'Amour had that leatherette collection that I showed in the last bookcase, they did a similar thing, Bantam did, with Agatha Christie. I've only got one of them, and it's an odd volume. They, they look similar and they feel similar that sort of fake leather stuff but um they're blue as opposed to Louis L'Amour was in brown these are the end papers really slick feeling then that would be nice to have the whole set like that I don't know how the paper would hold up so Bantam Books this is uh, Akhenaten a play in three acts I just found it and grabbed it uh it originally came out in uh well, it says 73 you know, there's a list of characters. It's not a, your standard Christie mystery or anything. So then, moving along as quick as we can here, we have um, a couple of these Alice Peters. We got Monk's Hood. Sorry about the glare there. There she is. That's. Let's see if I can get you to see her there. The window's killing us here. Um, this is a brother. This is a third chronicle of Brother Cad file. This came out in eighty one. I was kindly gifted the uh, run of paperbacks, which will be a project for me in two thousand eighteen that I'm really looking forward to. And then here is the sixteenth, The Heretics Apprentice. Um, I've already shown the paperback collection on this channel, so uh, they're up on a different, they're actually on a table being ready, you know, being lined up for reading. This is from 1990.
So these brother Cadfells, I've read um, a collection of three stories, uh, short stories in one volume that's sort of, I don't think it's really in sequence, and uh, really enjoyed it. He's a warrior monk. Um, so then next we have a writer of mysteries, again Sherlock Holmes. But this one is with Mary Russell. I've read these randomly out of order, and any one I've picked up, I've really enjoyed. And this is Laurie R. King. And this one's The Moor. I think I've read this one a couple times. Um, I picked it up, read it, enjoyed it, forgot about it for quite a few years, and then picked it up again, forgot I'd read it. Got halfway through, realized I'd read it, and just kept going because it was that good. Um, this is... Uh, St. Martin's Press, New York, uh, 1998. The paper on this is terrible. I don't know what's going on with that. It's yellowing badly. But this next one is another one of these Mary Russell and Sherlock Holmes uh, books. And this is The Language of Bees. This copy seems to be quite a bit better than that one. Bantam Books, and this came out in 2009. So these I really enjoy. Then um, the last four books here are from a suspense writer I I like, and I like his uh, his main character. So the first one here I'm going to do. Uh, let's see here. I don't think. Uh, yeah, this is his second novel. This is The Mark of the Assassin, um, Daniel Silver. And his first book was The Unlikely Spy, which I do not have. I don't have a lot of his, even though I've read quite a few of his. There he is. Um, this came out in uh, Ballard, uh, Villard, New York. Um, first edition from 1998. And uh, let's see here. These ones here. I'm not, I don't know what order they go in, so I'm just going to grab them. Here's uh, Daniel Silver, The Men Messenger. And this is one of the Gabrielle Alon volumes. He's an art restorer and an Israeli spy. Uh, I, I just really, really like the books. This one came out in um, 2006. Then we've got... Um, the Defector, it still has a price tag on it. And this one. Is another one of the Gabrielle Alon uh, thrillers. And um, this one came out in 2009. So that makes me think that this Moscow Rules was actually prior to that one. And this one... Uh, G.P. Uh, Putnam Sons, New York. Yeah, 2008. So, um, so in 10 previous novels, Daniel Silva has established himself as one of the world's finest writers of international intrigue and espionage. Now the death of a journalist leaves Alon to Russia, where he finds that in terms of spycraft, even he has something to learn. He's playing by Moscow rules now. It's not the grim, gray Moscow of Soviet times, but a new Moscow, awash in oil wealth and choked with bulletproof Bentleys. A Moscow where power resides once more behind the walls of the Kremlin and where critics of the ruling class are ruthlessly silenced. A Moscow where a new generation of Stalinists is plotting to reclaim an empire lost and to challenge the global dominance of its old enemy, the United States. So these are fun thrillers. Daniel Silver, um, Silva. And the Gabriel Alon uh, character ones, I like the best. So that's it for the 14th bookcase, third shelf. And thank you, BookTube.